Over the last week or so, I've been madly marking assignments for a nearby university. I've been doing this for a few years now, and one thing I've discovered is that many students cheat. In the latest assignment, for example, out of about 50 students I marked, 12 of them cheated. That's 24%. Almost 1 in 4 students cheated. At least the ones that I detected. Their job was to design their own database and put the results on paper. 12 of them pretty much had exactly the same database. Not only did they have the same database, they had copied it directly from another course. A course which I also mark. Sure, they had changed it a little bit, but not by much. It would be like having to submit a script for a play, submitting Shakespeare's Hamlet, that is, the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, then changing a few words using a thesaurus, the calamity of village, monarch of Scandinavia. Yes, that's pretty much what these students did. Changed a few words here and there to try to fool any automated plagiarism detection software. But what they seem to forget is that all of these assignments are hand-marked. And so to any marker, the cheating is abundantly clear. I don't know if the students are copying each other or paying for somebody to do their assignments, but certainly it's the same assignment being used over and over again. Now I'm not the examiner for these courses, so I have no right to fail the students or give them a zero on the assignment. I can only contact the university and let them know my findings, and that's exactly what I do every year. But what do the university do about it? Almost nothing. For example, in this latest assignment, after contacting the university about the cheating, I was told that if I suspect the students have not designed their own database, then I can deduct 15% from their assignment result with a note explaining my suspicions and telling them that they have the right to appeal the outcome if they feel that they have been wrongly accused. That's it. A few measly marks. I know the students will never appeal because they've been caught red-handed, but they certainly know that they don't need to fear getting kicked out of the university. Clearly, that's just not going to happen. Of all the cheaters that I've marked, only one of them have failed due to this loss of marks. Basically, they're getting away with it, because the university are not willing to come down hard on them. And the students know it. Why, you may ask? Why does the university not suspend them, or expel them, or at the very least, fail them in that assignment? I'll tell you why. Because every single student that I have accused of cheating is an international student. Why does that matter? Because international students make up a huge proportion of university revenue. Yes, as expected, money is to blame. If you kick an international student out, you no longer get that lucrative income stream. Here's the reported revenue from some of the more prestigious universities around Australia. Look at that. Hundreds of millions of dollars of international revenue. Cheddar in the bank. In total, Australia gets about $32 billion a year from international students. That's Australia's third biggest export industry, behind only iron ore and coal. As seen here, in Australia, Chinese students make up about 30% of all international students. India comes in second. I don't want to blame anyone, but these two countries tend to make up the bulk of cheaters that I've experienced. Why do they do it? Why do students cheat? It can't be that they're all stupid. From my experience, they're often quite smart. It's just that their English is not up to scratch, and they simply can't fully understand the lectures and the assignments. So in desperation, they turn to cheating. A media academic who used to manage a master's program at RMIT University, Jenny Waite, said that many international students struggled with basic communication and in some cases had absolutely no English whatsoever. She said, I've read a lot of assignments written by international students which appear to have been written in Chinese and then translated using Google. I don't blame the students at all for doing that, and I think many of them do leave with a somewhat bitter attitude about their experience. One of the struggles was to try and get our English entry-level standards lifted higher, but the pressures on universities to make money from international students is such that they don't want to, because that will knock out a lot of potential students. I think the umbrella response, if you like, is that universities don't really want to be confronted with the problems that international students face. It's a huge cash cow for them, in a cash-poor sector. They're almost desperately dependent on international student income. 
Another lecturer from an elite Australian university, who wanted to remain anonymous, said she was shocked with the poor level of English of some of her students. She remembers one incident specifically. A young international student came to my office who was accompanied by another woman and seemed nervous. She couldn't speak any English, and she didn't understand anything that I said. The woman accompanying the student, whom I thought was a friend, was in fact a translator hired for the meeting. The student had gone through the first year of her degree without the ability to speak English. It floored me. Olivia Joe, a former student at RMIT, said that many of her classmates couldn't understand the lecture content. She said, If a student in the class can't even understand what the teacher is saying, how can they finish their assignment? Another RMIT former student, Lu Yi, said, Language is a big problem. Chinese don't talk to local students because they think the local students don't want to talk to them, and so they tend to get into small cliques at university. So-called contract cheating has become a real thing. Entire websites have been set up that allow international students to contract a person to write their assignments and essays for them. Chinese-born Yingying Dou was the mastermind behind a Chinese language service called MyMaster. It allowed students to pay for their assignments to be written for them. A translation of a flyer found on the walls of a university said, Are you racking your brains on your schoolwork? Do you worry about spending $3,000 retaking tuition on the failing subject? Leave your worries to my master and make your study easier. Apparently, at its peak, my master had 100 writers working for them and were servicing hundreds of students at some of Australia's top universities. Of course, Ms. Dole claims that she had no idea about the website, but promised that she would investigate. But it's not just assignments that students are paying for. You can even pay a person to sit your exam for you. Impersonators are being hired to actually take your place in the exam room. You hand over the cash, and then they will guarantee you a pass in the exam. How do they do this, you may be wondering. Well, you give them your student ID, and they use that to impersonate you. They rely on the fact that many university supervisors simply do not have the time to thoroughly check every ID. Even if they did, if they see this face sitting at the desk, and then this face on the ID card, are they really going to cause a scene and accuse a student of impersonating somebody? From my personal experience, I can't even recognise my Chinese wife on her own ID card. How could I possibly accuse a student of not being the actual student? It would be incredibly embarrassing if I was wrong, and may even result in accusations of racism and the like. Cheating is rife in Australian universities, and sadly, it's because we are too addicted to the revenue that international students bring. Unfortunately, in the long run, it will hurt the entire industry. If Australian universities get a reputation for allowing widespread cheating, then the qualifications will eventually become worthless. And when that happens, no more students will come. As often is the case in big business, short-term gain, long-term pain.